What's going on guys and welcome back to the most spectacular read through of all times. I am the big cliche. I am big Papa Pomp without the pump. I am the rock that is never hard. King Kong got a lot on me. I am your one. Your only T B R, and I would just like to say, you're welcome. Welcome back, guys, to another read through of one and only Berserk. And I would just like to say to you guys, man, thank you guys so much for all the support that you guys have been showing on the videos, man. It's been awesome. It's been awesome, man, to see that at least some of you guys were interested in watching me go through, <laughs> sit down and read something for two hours, you know. Um, it, it just goes to show you that, you know, interest is, is a, a very interesting thing. <laughs> That's weird of me to say. Anyways, um... Today we are going to jump into volume 6. Hopefully we can get through this volume. I'm going to try to get through it. As I say, while I'm reacting, you know, I don't want to make any promises. If if it's, you know, if it's great and I, you know, that I can lose track of time. Because the thing about, the thing when it comes on to manga is that it's not always super entertaining. Okay? So... A lot of times you might have some lag in between and it's it's when when you having those I'm always for good for a good story. Right? I'm always for that. I'm always for a good story. So that's why most of the times I lose track of time. But I still don't wanna make any promises to you guys and make you feel like, you know, um that I'm gonna get through the volume because it's a lot of chapters. Today we're doing it looked like these are not that long of chapters, but it's still a lot of chapters. It's still some, something like 10 chapters in this volume, but it's only like 200 and something pages. So I don't know how long the last one is, but it does start at 201. So I'm guessing it's about 200 and something pages manga wise. Okay, so we have about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes. 10 chapters to get through today um hopefully we can get through all of them doesn't look like they're that long to be honest doesn't look like they're that long so we should fly through them we should get through the volume today we should but as i said don't want to make any promises um but yeah man great things are happening in the manga we finally find out how um how Griffith is connected um, to that, to the other world, to the other dimension. Um, how did he become a part of the Black Hand? Um, it's just um, we we haven't on the details, or we haven't seen how he became a part of that. But how he became a demon is starting to slowly, slowly understand. You know, from him having to be heal it around his neck the prophecy um from nesferatu to um to guts so we're getting close we're getting there we're getting the backstory is fire right now that's all i'm gonna say the the, the backstory is uh, it's on fire right now and i and and i like the fact that you're taking the time out to tell this because it sets up a lot and un to understand the type of person that Guts is, what are his values, his morality, you know, why he doesn't like being around a lot of people because he believes he's cursed and all of this other stuff. So, um, I, I, um, Casca is still real shady. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She real, she, she's still shady, you know. Um, you guys informed me on the last um, read through that Casca is the only girl in the group. So I'm sorry if I took some of these drawings for, for, for girls, okay? They they look like girls. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
you know, when you're, when you're drawing men, you got to be specific, man. You got to have some ruggedness to you. I mean, we all can't be Griffith out here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We can't, we can't all be Princeton, you know? So it, it's just to see that many, I want to say, it's like, because, <laughs> you know, handsome is a very weird word. Sorry about that. Okay, handsome is a very, it, it's weird. It, you know what I'm saying when it comes on to describing the, some of these guys. Because you can distinctly see the difference in drawing, but it's like, if, if Casca is the only girl in the group, right, some of those those um, guys that came up to Guts, you know, congratulating him, oh, thanking him for being the leader of the squad or whatever that was trying to have a beer with him and stuff like that. Even the one that was talking to him on the wall and was kind of explaining to him what's Griffith's deal, right? Like, that was not a guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. The drawing just doesn't portray the person as a guy. Guys just don't behave like that. It just seemed weird, you know what I'm saying? But... I'm going off of what you guys say. You guys say that she, um, that Casca is the only girl. So, <laughs> I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with that because um, you guys have read through it already. You know what the deal is. Okay, so, good on that. So, I think at the end of the last one, we got to see um, after the Nesferatu arc, we got to see um, the the prophecy and also Griffith getting hurt, and you know him getting the knighthood and all of this other stuff um, that he had at the end of that chapter. So we're gonna jump into into chapter two of Master of the Sword, right? That's how we're starting off this chapter, because you know what they like to do at the end of volumes. They like to do the whole you know cliffhanger thing. So we're going to jump into chapter two of Master of the Sword to begin this volume. So let's go get it, man. Let's go see what this is all about. All right. So here we go, guys. So there's apparently, you know, what did I do? I don't remember if I put out a poll or whatever the situation is, but you guys don't necessarily care for. I think it was an update I did and I was talking about, um, how long it takes me to do to to, to put out read throughs because I you know a lot of editing because I have to do sound effects and stuff like that and you guys explicitly let me know that you don't care for sound effects or whatever it doesn't really matter so for this read through there's not gonna be any sound effects I'm gonna see how quickly I can get this done I still have to render out a one to two hour video for YouTube. So for for the people who are still watching on YouTube, it's just gonna be podcast style with no sound effects and stuff like that. So I hope you guys don't batter me. Like if you guys would rather, <laughs> I don't want this to become confusing. But it seems like overwhelmingly, you know, it might not be a lot of people that enjoyed the sound effects. Um, but I think most people didn't really, they, they don't mind. It's not necessarily that they don't like it. It's more if they don't mind, you know what I'm saying? They don't mind if it doesn't have any sound effects. So let's jump into this chapter, see what this is all about. Remember, no sound effects. <laughs> okay. So it's just the soothing sound of my voice that, you know, so as long as I'm reading through it, I guess, um, you guys don't mind. So I'm not going to pause for effect or nothing like that because it, I think people, some people are just leaving it on, just listening to it. Maybe they're, you know, cleaning their house and you know what I'm saying? They just put, put it on and whatever. They don't necessarily want sound effects. So, um, all right. So let's do this. Okay. So we have Master of the Sword and we got 10 chapters to get through. Um, so let's go see what this is all about. Okay. So we off the bat guts and Griffith somewhere in the field here look like then <clears throat> he got his castle that that much you could give him he ain't got the kingdom yet I don't know what the plan is to get the kingdom but he's trying to get up there so we have Griffith and guts talking here 
And Griffith is saying, tell me, do I need a reason each time? I put myself in harm's way for your sake? Okay. Not necessarily. And Gus says, no. I just... And somebody interrupts them. Why? It's the white hawk. Have your injuries healed? Who is this dude? Is this the king? Okay, it seems like it's the king. So the king approaches them, interrupts them. Okay. So Griffith, kneeling already, says, Why, your majesty? And he's... He said, hey, Guts. So he's trying to get Guts to kneel to. You know, Guts get guts don't play those games. <laughs> he's like, you there. You are before the king. How dare you? <laughs> so this is why maybe his, one of his, well, this is somebody to the, to the king. You know, so Guts gets down. And the king says, no matter. Raise your heads. I am simply on a stroll. But sire, you know, you know, you you always got those, you know, what you call them. You know, I don't want to say this because <laughs> it goes on YouTube too. But you know, dick riders. <laughs> Anyways, so you always got those types of people for people in for people in power. The ones the ones who will do anything and yeah, you know I'm saying never challenges anything. You know, the yes men, the yes men. But, you know, <laughs> they have another word for that. <laughs> anyway, so he says, but sire. And the king says, the castle is teeming with agitation from all the successive battles and war councils. There is not even a moment's rest to be had. Let me introduce you. This is my younger brother, Count Julius. He is general of the White Dragons and second in succession to the throne of Midland. And Griffith responds, I am Griffith, pleased to make your acquaintance. Hmm. Okay. Dude already snarling at Griffith, huh? King says, Incidentally, Sir Griffith, the battlefield exploits of your band of the hawk are always most impressive. My gracious thanks, Griffith responds. When I see the daring valor with which you all fight, it makes even the old man's blood seem to boil. I recall when, of old, my subjects and I would run about the battlefield, alas, when I was young. Yeah, what is in here? Speaking. And so, you know, the yes man responds, whatever his name is. <laughs> I already forgot his name, honestly, because I don't think he's going to be a major player. But let me go and get his name from the introduction. Count Julius. Okay, so Count Julius is already skeptical. He's like, sir. All right, you're getting on my nerves now. You need to stop. Okay, so my alarm keep going up. I don't know. I snoozed it the first time. Anyways, so Count Julius responds. Sir, speaking that day with a mere troop commander? Come, there is... So the king responds to him, come, there is no wrong in it. It is true that there are statesmen who do not think favorable, favorable of such people. They say that the influence of those of common origin will reflect poorly on, arm, on our army's prestige. But prestige, status, and the like do not win battles, nor do they feed the people. These are troubled times. I anticipate that rather than noble generals 
who are bound to old customs. It is common draftees such as yourself, not taken in by status, who will help form the cornerstone of the kingdom. So, you know, yes, man is snarling, Count Julius snarling in the back. And then Griffith responds, For your sincere words of thanks, I am most grateful. Okay, next page. Who is this? This look like the princess right here. It's gotta be the princess, you know. They, cause it, <laughs> you know, they always peeping. Why is the why is the princess always peeping? Y'all remember Hinata from Naruto? She was like, in so, in a in a certain way, Hinata was royalty in the, in the hidden in the hidden 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 leaf village, right? She was, um, she was kind of like royalty. Cause I mean, she was so you know she she was supposed to be the successor to the um to the um <laughs> the Yuga clan. <laughs> Am I forgetting my Naruto references right now? This is not cool. <laughs> Anyways, but they're always peeping for some reason. It's like in anime, there's always the girl that is attracted to the main character is always peeping behind a post, hey, <laughs> with you know creepy looks. And stuff. So here we go. That I'm pretty sure that it's got to be the princess. Got to be the king's daughter. So let's move up here. So uh, she was there peeping from behind. Okay. So we got. Oh, so Griffith saw her. He's like, who might that lady be? Hmm. So the king responds, Oh, my daughter, Charlotte. She is shy. She claims to dislike stern soldiers, and seldom does she venture outside the palace. Okay, so we got, her name is Charlotte, 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 that's how we usually pronounce that. Okay, so the king calls her over, Charlotte, just as you see, perhaps because she is only my only daughter, I have spoiled her to some degree. Excuse her, Lord Griffith. He's like, come let us go, Charlotte. So she just walks past Griffith. She bumped her she bumps her toe. She's definitely going to fall. <laughs> and Griffith is going to catch her. <laughs> I could see that coming. <laughs> anyway, so Griffith catches her, she bumps her toe. She's about to fall. Griffith Casser, she he holding on to them titties. You know, <laughs> you know, already. You know what I'm saying? Damn! Yo, Count Count Julius is like. So Griffith is like, your your pardon. Please be careful. So my dude stepped up. He's like, how dare you touch the princess? You bastard. And slaps Griffith in the face. Bruh. So Guts is ready to go. He's like, bruh, you ain't about to touch my friend like that. You, you know, you must slap my friend in the face. He's like, hey, pal. So Griffith had to hold Guts back, of course. Because, you know, Guts is always down for a fight. Damn, he got blood. Damn, he slapped him. You drew blood, buddy? Damn, he's like, please pardon my rudeness, your lordship, General Julius. <laughs> he's like, what are you doing? The king is talking about this. Like, Not, nothing at all. So um, Charlotte responds, said, nothing at all, father. I said, now. Let us go, princess. With his yes man ass. <laughs> okay, so princess walks away. Looks like she's intrigued with Griffith. Of course, he's a pretty boy. You know, he's still princing out here. Ain't nothing gonna change that. So, bad at him. Guts is smiling. Then we got Count Julius walking down with his cape, <laughs> of course. So, he said, oh, but did you hear? Look like some girls are talking amongst themselves. 
They say that thanks to his merits in his last battle, Lord Griffith could be made a count. Oh, I did hear that. <laughs> I know because Count Julius heard them saying that. You know, he saw he don't want it to become a count. They said, and they're all like fawning over Griffith, and they're like, he's just superb, even prettier than me. And I'm a woman. You're damn right, he's prettier than you. <laughs> like, how frustrating. <laughs> uh, not only that, he's leader of the strongest military group in the kingdom and the best swordsman. It's just too much. Yes, that is it. <laughs> he's so elegant and dignified. It's hard to believe he's a commoner like us. And he's so much more refined than those awkward aristocrats. On that note, the officers in the castle are all so boorish and rude. It's disgusting. <laughs> the other officers are pitiful compared to Lord Griffith. Oh, yes. Right. Right. <laughs> so, you know, Count Jealousy over here. <laughs> Count Jealousy steps up. He's like, hey, you maidservants. What are you chattering about? And they're like, there, there you go. Like, so he calls them chirping sparrows. <laughs> chirping sparrows. <laughs> it's like, so Griffith, um, who is this talking? Such a loud shout will resound throughout the entire castle. Somebody is talking to him. Is oh, so it's Minister. Minister Foss. So that's his name. Minister Foss. Okay. So he says up, he's like, You seem most disturbed, Lord Julius. Does something concern you? He's like, It's nothing. This guy looks like the behemoth. <laughs> Why? <laughs> anyway, so he's like, Incidentally, General, did you hear the debate about the King's Guard for the upcoming autumn hunt? It's customary that be left each year to my white dragon knights. Oh, oh, it's, oh my God, it's him talking. I thought, I tell you, these talking bubbles, sometimes they're confusing. You don't know who's talking, so I can't change up my voice. <laughs> it's weird. Anyway, so this is, um, Count Julius talking. He's like, it's customary to be left each year to my white dragon knights, but what? I hear it was determined by the king's command that this year it will be the band of the hawk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so he's like, w what? Nani? <laughs> uh, that can't be. The autumn hunt is an important event for the king to foster goodwill amongst his lords. God and his majesty should be an honorable duty Permitted only to fall upon the white dragons, who have always been part of the regular army. To think that, until yesterday, that band of robbers could be promoted, and, and then... What could His Majesty be thinking? Are you certain this is permissible? What? It seems that the glory of the White Dragon Knights, formerly admired as our kingdom's mightiest, has faded due to the recent activities of the Band of the Hawk. One wonders if the name of the courageous General Julius will end up being erased by that of Griffith. It's like, how, how dare you? It is a rumor. A rumor told by many. However, one cannot scorn his ability on the battlefield. That the band of the hawk is ever victorious is an indisputable fact. He is surely a godsend in our time of conflict. The fighting shows no sign of ending soon. In such case, he will continue to distinguish himself militarily furthermore the way he has ingrat 
ingratiated himself, his majesty seems to have placed a terribly high value on the boy. If we aren't careful, Griffith might even reach the level of general. Ridiculous! I won't accept it! <laughs> I've never even heard of a common born general. He has a first for everything, buddy. <laughs> that boy? A general? Like me? You mean that humble commoner will speak to me on the same level? Such a possibility does exist, it is said. N never! I swear, I'll never accept it. However, speaking of customary events, hunting is an inherently dangerous thing. One never knows what kind of bees may be concealed in the forest and thickets. Say, say... Say what? What is this guy, Varys <laughs> of Game of Thrones? <laughs> you know, planting seeds. <laughs> yeah, you know I'm saying he reminds me of Varys though. The way how he he articulates himself and just I knew this this kind of setup was coming. He's like, oh, I don't know, <laughs> giving you some ideas of if you want to take out Griffith. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Wink, wink. <laughs> At times, an unexpected dangerous beast may lie in hiding. What do you mean to say? Or perhaps a stray arrow meant to strike prey could at some point fly wildly. A stray arrow well covered in poison. So, Julius opens his eyes. <laughs> He's like... You, you you couldn't possibly that's exactly what he suggested could you stop acting a fool <laughs> a stray arrow general <laughs> so he starts laughing ha <laughs> a stray arrow eh? <laughs> uh, interesting <laughs> A fitting way for a commoner to die. <laughs> I don't think you should take that chance. So he walks away from, what's his name? Minister Voss. Foss? Minister Foss. Hopefully I remember him. His name. Okay, so we got gun g guts looking up at the moonlight with his sword in his hand. Very nice scene. So he's, rem he's remembering the talk he had with Griffith. Tell me, do I need a reason each time I put myself in harm's way for your sake? Your friends, man. Okay. So he's like, for your sake, huh? That one time, it was this same sort of glaringly bright full moon. So we got Guts reminiscing here of the time when he was... I think this was after when he was bleeding out from the attack from the wolves, I think. And he's like, I don't know if this is the answer I was searching for or not. But for now, for now, I'll wield my sword for his sake. And that is the end of the chapter, Master of the Sword. Move on to the next chapter. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Who is this? Whew. Is that Charlotte? It, this looks like short Charlotte. Ooh, that's she is. Ah, uh, wow, she is pretty, man. My God, that's a beautiful drawing of her. I'm pretty sure that's Charlotte. Anyways, all right, we got wolves. In the forest. I guess this is the hunt. Maybe these are hunting dogs. They more look like... Oh, do they hunt with wolves? That wouldn't make any sense. More like... Or are those foxes? I don't know what that is. I don't know. They will. Uh, I'm wondering if they're... These are definitely hounds. Because today we're going to some hunt. Let me... Liquidize the throat area. Ah, 
Anyway, let's continue. Hopefully we can get through this before the first break. Okay, so they, yeah, yeah, they're riding the horses and with their hounds and stuff. And this chapter is called The Assassin. We're going to have like four chapters of this, um, of this arc here, mini arc, I'm guessing. So they're like, quite the tenacious prey. This is the king talking. So who is this? Who is this talking to him? Is that would your majesty care to join the chase once? No, I wish not to. I would soon tire at my age. Besides, it would displease them all if I were to come from the flank and steal their heart, their hard fought game. You know, Julius, you know, <laughs> Julius in the back, you know, he, 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 he's, he's kirking in the back, you know, so he's like, how? Huh, how magnanimous. You know, he's, st he look, he's staring at Griffith right now. Over there. Staring at, at Griffith. Okay. Staring at him. It looks like somebody specifically has the order to kill him. Or, you know, the stray arrow. <laughs> you know. So, he looks at this guy. Julius looks at some guy, looks like he has a crossbow. Alright, so... Okay, something is... I need to bring this... I, hold on, is it? Something is... It's supposed. It's not supposed to be on top. Hold on. What did I just do? <laughs> okay there we go but it's too much i need to put this over a little bit more yeah there we go that's what i was supposed to do because it's blocking a part of the the panel so i had to move the picture over i don't know anyway so let's continue here so we have no no it'll escape to the thicket whatever that means what am I holding right now? Okay, so I was on the wrong page. Okay, so no escape to the thicket, and um, I don't know what they. What are they chasing? Foxes? What is that? What kind of animal is is this? Is that a? I don't know what kind of animal that is, but guts. What are they chasing? What are they hunting? I'm not sure yet. So they said, you did it, boy. You did it, boy. Whoa, whoa. So they're chasing. And Guts is here. He's like, what's the matter? Why do we have got to tag along while the nobles goof off? It's ridiculous. Can't be helped. It's part of the job, too. Besides, it's a lot easier than going out to battle. No worries about getting killed. <laughs> Little do you know. <laughs> so, it's like, it feels more natural to me when I'm swinging this around. So, he's, he's referring to his sword. Guts is doing that. Okay, so, this dude, Quarkus, the hater, <laughs> Quarkus the hater, right? He's like, for God's sake, is that all you got in your head? Uh, yours, a, oh, is all, <laughs> I'm reading that wrong. He said, for God's sake, is that all you got in that head of yours? So it's like, Quarkus again? Shut up. Listen, we're the guard for the autumn hunt. It's an honorable duty that until now has always been reserved for the kingdom's native born white dragon knights it's a privilege for just the chosen few as it were so Quirkus responds we've run around covered in mud on battlefields for so many years to earn that privilege we've risked our lives so many times and you say it's ridiculous so somebody calls out to him Quirkus Okay. 
If you like swinging your sword that much, do it on your own. Killing fool. So Guts is like looking at this dude. Casca comes up with her bad self. Okay. She looks over. And she then she looks up. So I said that Charlotte, man, she she's a, she's a, she's a, she's a queen already, bro. So she comes through. They're shooting at whatever the hell these animals are. They look like wolves. They look like foxes. I don't. Know, foxes are smaller, but still, it doesn't really look like a wolf. In this picture, they look like a wolf. It just doesn't look like. It looks like they're hunting wolves, which is very strange. People don't hunt wolves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, I guess this is like an exotic hunting or something. Maybe it's bobcats? They more look like bobcats. If you want to say that. <laughs> I don't know. You guys can let me know what kind of animals they're hunting. That is, I mean, I'm going and saying it's wolves, but it could be something else. Because, I mean, there's a lot of animals in the cat family <laughs> you know what i'm saying and dog family that you can get them mixed up a lot because of you know the way their whiskers are and stuff like that so um so yeah um so it looks she turns her head away um charlotte she turns her head away from the battlefield. Somebody asks her, do you dislike hunting? And she, Griffith, ooh, Griffith just pulls up, pulls up beside her, she, like snaws away. So she says, today is the first time I have come to the hunting grounds. My father invited me, so I felt I must accompany him. But I do not think that I will grow to like hunting. It is cruel. War is the same way. Why is it that men enjoy a little more than shedding blood? So, what is he doing? He picks a leaf and put it in his mouth. <laughs> so he's like, my... So she's like, my, oh, so she picks a leaf to, hold on a second, is he playing music with the leaf? I know that it's something you can do, but it's, it's not anything like tantalizing, like you can make music with leaves, but it's not anything great, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can make sound with blowing on leaves. Um, so she picks a leaf and it seems like she is making sounds too I'm not sure because I see a music sign there that's why I'm thinking maybe she's making sounds with the leaves but I'm not sure or she's just putting it in her mouth okay so Griffith so Griffith is showing her says like this here so she puts it in her mouth I don't know what you're doing with this leaf in their mouth honestly I think it's music they're trying to do or she's just I don't know why they're walking around with with the leaf in their mouth Okay, so, you know, the, the thing about Griffith, right? The thing about Griffith that you got to understand, like, everything he's doing is strategic. So, he may have zero interest in this in this girl, like, on, on, a, on a deeper level. You get what I'm saying? On a surface level, if he can get close to the princess and marry the princess, that would make him a prince. That would automatically make him... Um, be able to get his own kingdom per se so he, everything he's doing right now is strategic and he's doing it on point right now so um Casca is looking up there um we, we all know Casca likes griffith like you know what i'm saying like he, she really really likes him so she's looking at them and she looks up there and then she looks her puts her head down and guts looks up there um and then you know count julius over here like bah high and mighty is like so the dude that's 
I'm guessing he's supposed to be the assassin. He's like, Excellency. And um, Julius tells him to wait. The chance will no doubt come. Wait for when he's alone. Hey, there it is. Drive it out. So they're still hunting. So, um, so this whatever it is is heading towards the princess and Griffith. Um, it's a boar. Uh, you know, I was thinking it was, but I didn't want to assume. Okay, so it's a boar. It comes through and runs right beside the princess's horse. I'm guessing the horse is going to, yes, going to hike. And I'm guessing she has no control over what's happening right now. So the horse takes off with her. <laughs> the horse takes off with her. Griffith gives chase, of course. They're like, hey, look. Okay, so um, Julius looks at his assassin and gives him the signal. Now you got a chance. So he aims his crossbow or he's getting it ready. He gets it ready. Okay, so the horse, um, the princess and Griffith is out there. Okay, the horse finally stops. They say, whoa, whoa. Okay. So, Griffith gets off his horse and, you know. And now she's, is so, he's trying to calm her down. He's like, it is all right. And immediately, she jumps off and jumps into his arms. Okay, so I know he's feeling them titties on him. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to make it dirty, guys, but, you know. <laughs> anyway, so she's hugging him, and we got the, the assassin is in the tree. He's in the tree. Okay. And then we have, he's like, are you hurt? at all this is griffith asking her and putting her back on her horse like uh it's like so she's like Pfft. hmm so griffith is asking her what is the matter uh <laughs> she's like i was i was scared very scared w what a shock my heart is still pounding I've never seen on such a wild horse ride in my life. I've never been on a on such a wild horse ride in my life. Oh. Your fear seems have already fled somewhat. It's like Griffith Come. Let us return. Everyone is worried. So here comes the arrow. What? It hits him in the chest. It hits Griffith in the chest. And that's the end of the chapter. Did it pierce his armor? Why did that make him look like a girl so much? <laughs> Anyways, um, let's get to the next chapter. All right, we are back. We are back. All right. Let's get to the next chapter. Got Casca in the opening. Okay, so Griffith looks like the arrow pierces armor. You know, Guts is coming in. He's like, Griffith! They're all gathering around. Casca comes off his horse. Cox. Everybody is saying Griffith, crying out to him. He took the arrow in the chest. Man, that thing pierces armor. What kind of flipsy ass or armor is this, man? <laughs> you know what I mean? 
So you know Casca is there. Griffith, are you okay? Hang on. Princess looks scared, like, hey princess. Damn, Guts grabs her. Guts grabs the princess. I was like about to she was like, what the hell is going on? Where did that arrow come from? Uh, uh, I do not know. Uh, ouch. Let go. Damn, good. Guts is pissed. He's like, oh no. If we aren't careful, his heart might. No way. Mm. You know, Guts is looking around to see where that arrow came from. And he's looking around, assassin is hiding behind a tree. He's like, that arrow has been well soaked in a deadly poison of the Kalabal Kala beam. Even if it's just a scratch, he's done for. Kasuke is holding his eye, Griffith. And then, it looks like Griffith responded. He's like, don't get so worked up. Don't get so worked up. It looks like he's good. The <laughs> assassin seems su surprised. He's like, huh? <laughs> what do you mean don't get so worked up? Did it hit the behemoth? Is that what happened? I like Griffith. I like, but the arrow. Are you alright? Okay, so they took the arrow out. What's that? And Griffith is like, poison, I'd say. And a rather strong one. Then why? <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> what did I say? I, I ate it to be healing, didn't it? Because <laughs> we know he doesn't leave home without it. It's the only explanation. Was like he carries it around his neck, so if he got hit, maybe... It hit the behemoth and didn't touch him. Then why? It was this. So it acted as a shield. Okay, so the behemoth saved them. The egg of the king. Is that the necklace you always wear? Uh, are you serious? Good grief. There's no way. Do things like that even happen? It's a miracle. The devil's own luck. Really? It's literally a good luck charm. Devil's luck. <laughs> yeah. This is no ordinary luck. So, yeah. Griffith, you should take off your armor. We have to see whether you are injured. I'm fine. It was really nothing. Don't say that. It was coated in poison, right? There's a risk even with a small wound. More right, honestly, it didn't even graze me. But, uh... I I excuse me. This is the princess talking. I'm sorry. If, if I had been able to handle a horse more ably, this would not have... What do you mean? It is our duty to protect you as well. She's crying. It's like, anyway, though, who did this? Who out there wants our boss dead? Low life bastard. We'll kill him. Wait, what if they were aiming for the princess? Either way, we can't have it. Oh, Guts is like, I'm going to search the undergrowth around here with my men. Come on, let's go, Gaston. Right now. Whoa. Something happened to Griffith. Wait a second, did he get hurt? He opened his eyes, and he's like, So the kind of like, bah, a high, a high price to pay, eh, for this poison. Okay, I didn't... Did he see something? Wait a second. Did he just see... Did he see Julius? 
like in a vision or something. All right, so we're back at Windham Castle. It's like that was pathetic. I don't know who threw that glass on the ground, but somebody's pissed at something. I was like, please forgive me. However, I don't want to hear your excuses. Who are these people? Some new characters here. Oh, it's Julius. So he's probably talking to the guy that failed the assassination. Okay, so the conclusion that this was a Chudder assassin aiming for the princess means that this incident is settled for now. Almost no suspicion whatsoever rests on our shoulders. But thanks to this, we've given Griffith the merit of being the one who protected the princess with his own body. The commoners heard the rumor and immediately enshrined the boy as some hero. Even the king seems terribly happy. Yeah, backfired on you, didn't it, Julius? Yes. It's like we've effectively helped him advance even further. It's the pinnacle of ineptitude. <laughs> so... The assassin is like, but, but, but if the arrow was meant for the princess, what an amazing coincidence it made to pierce his heart. Then do you suggest that I go before his majesty and inform him that you aimed it at Griffith? The important thing is despite that, he's still alive. But it was highly unlikely such a thing would. Enough, be gone. So he dismissed the guy. He's sitting in his, in his office or whatever. Whatever. He dismissed the dude that missed. Okay, so he's like thinking about Griffith. He's like, those eyes. Like he was trying to daunt me. Like he was looking down on some worthless thing. That was his expression. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. I'm royalty. Second in line to the throne of Midland. Compared to that common boy, there's a world of difference in both social standing and rank. And yet, it was the same during the hunt for one instant like a beast hunting prey. Yes, looking at me with eyes just like hawks. Oh, so he was he just saw him. Okay, so I thought he was like a vision. Um, like he saw what he was up to or something, but he, he was there. So he's like, could it be? Could it be what? <laughs> no, it couldn't. The other lords were present too. It was just our eyes meeting for an instant. Above all, there isn't any proof. So he was wondering if Griffith knows that it was him. So he's like, it couldn't be. So Guts is now making his way up some stairs. Up to Griffith's study <laughs> so, so he's like hi he's like sorry to call you up so late wait there a minute I'll be done shortly there's more again so Guts is like there's more again have you read all these hmm well most of them to become great one has to be able to do more than fight I do agree with that a hundred percent, Griffith. I do agree with that. I concur. Terabyte reacts concurs. <laughs> okay, so he said, having said that, half of them are just light reading, history, religion, philosophy, chemistry, tactics, and then quirky ones like cosmetics or cooking, even things like this. Is <laughs> what is this? Oh. Well, <laughs> man just gave this guy, gave this guy a Playboy magazine and was like, even things like this. <laughs> it was like, want to borrow it? <laughs> Damn, and they going ham in the book, in, in this magazine too, bro. Damn, my dude. Okay, so we got, so you need. So you need to do, so you need me to do something? He's like, hmm. I'd like you to, 
kill a man for me. <laughs> How are you just going to say that so casually, Griffith? How are you just going to say that so casually? Yeah, that's the end of Assassin um, Part 2. I'm going to say Part 2. Okay, next chapter. Okay, so Griffith looks like he's on the move. He's, be he's become an assassin himself. Okay. It's parchy trope. So he's going back to when he was in the office. It's like, kill? Who? The man second in line to this kingdom's throne. General of the White Dragons. Count Julius. That guy? Huh? The reason is this. Mm, so Guts immediately gets the picture. It's like, oh, so he's the one that tried to kill you. Okay, I got you, bro. I got you. This arrow's coated with an extract from the Calibal Bean. An ordinary person would never typically possess it. As poisons go, it's highly deadly. I checked with each doctor in town, and only one of them handles this. Furthermore, only one person has purchased it recently. Apparently, the man said to be the best bowman among the white dragons. Okay. I paid one of the maids to investigate him. This evening, she happened to see him coming out of Count Julius's office, looking like he'd been severely berated. She wasn't able to catch any details of the conversation, but they were discussing the disturbance of the assassination attempt. I still haven't talked about this with anyone. It's for those reasons that I'm asking you to do this. This is an assassination. It's fundamentally different from crossing swords with an enemy in battle. It's dirty work. Failure isn't permissible at all, nor is your face being seen. That, um, it's for those reasons that I'm asking you to do this. Can I count on you? It ain't like you. Just cut to the chase and order me to do it, like always. <laughs> uh, Alright, so Guts is out here being dodgy on top of rooftops, jumping from rooftop to rooftop like, like he, 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 you know, he in Assassin's Creed. <laughs> okay, so we got um, what's his name? Um, Julius on top of a roof. Look like he's practicing with with a little boy, a little kid. And Guts is watching. So he's like, Julius, lucky me. He's practicing with someone. Is that a prince? Who is that? Is he practicing sword fight with? So Guts is wondering, who's that kid? Okay. Damn! So Julius is like stunned, and he pulls the kid up by his by his hair. He's like, "What's the meaning of this? You call yourself a son of royalty? That's what I'm saying. He's, <laughs> I'm thinking he's a prince. Oh my god! Or is this his son? Could be his son too. Now stand up. Stop resting." Your enemy won't wait for you in battle. It's like, Highness. So somebody comes and interrupts the Highness. Please let that be enough for today. He's like, be gone with you, Asan. Adonis must someday become the leader of my white dragon knights and command the mightiest force in the land. And that's not all. As royalty, he may possibly wed Princess Charlotte and gain control of all of Midland. It's what a son of royalty is designed to do. 
but if you were the brother wait a second but if you were the brother bro like why would you want her to <laughs> this is what I'm talking about with monarchs they're so weird <laughs> it's what son of royalty is designed to do the importance of his duty is different from what from that which befalls other men come at me try to get through my defenses at least once so prince attacks again whatever his name is what's his name again adonis adonis attacks again and he gets knocked on his ass again <laughs> okay so he's like very well enough for today so he's like don't cool down too much it affects tomorrow's trading training so the guy's asking, are you all right? That is a grievous wound. I will tend to it right away. Young master, do not be disheartened. Ever since the countess died, your father has tried desperately to do all he can on his own to raise you as a knight. Please do not resent his actions. So it's his son. Okay. It's his son. So okay, that's cool. All right. So Guts is looking... As like, uh, yeah, <laughs> father figures. So he's reminiscing about, um, what the hell was his name again? I can't even remember the dude that sold him. I can't remember his name, but, um, okay. So we got, so Gus is saying, okay, I can't be careless at a time like this. Okay. So Julius is back in the castle. He's like, so um, his servant or whatever he's like your highness I understand your feelings but if you could just be a bit gentler with the young master doubtless he bears the heavy responsibility of royalty but master Adonis is only 13 and he must miss his mother so begging your pardon this fierce trading training these past few days has been somewhat off the mark yes I understand you may I understand you may go aside I've been unsuccessful with my duties in the castle lately. Maybe my frustration has got the best of me a bit. I earnestly hope you will not be unreasonable. Okay, so. He throws is another glass in the fire or whatever. Or um, another cup. <laughs> so he's like, ah. So, something opens the wind. That's probably what's guts coming through that door. So, he's like, the wind? No. But he appears. Guts appears in front of him. And he's like, an, an intruder? So, he grabs, he reaches for his sword. For his sword. And Guts grabs his sword, goes after him, goes after him with swinging. Woo! Damn! Before he could even swing his sword, Guts cuts, cuts him. Guts cuts him open. Mmm. No chance. Guts cuts him. Oh, and he sees his face. He's like, mm. cuts him across the tress, and he's like hanging on to guts. He's like, you're done, bro. You're done, buddy. He's like, ah, ah, I know you. And guts is like, you're. And he's like, you're, you're, you're Griffiths. So he's like hanging on to guts' cape. Then he falls on the ground. Oh crap. No. The sun comes in. Adonis comes in and sees him. Hopefully he doesn't see his face. He's like, ah, that intruder. Oh, he going after the sun too? He's like, I've been seen. Bro.
I did not expect him to do that. Yo, he killed him? Yo, Guts killed Adonis with no hesitation, my guy. Yo. With no hesitation, he puts the, thro the sword through him, man. Damn. Wow. D it looks like he's regretting it now. Damn, bro. That is wild. That is wild. Okay, next chapter. I gotta keep moisturizing my throat. It's getting a little dry. <laughs> Alright, so he pierces him. It looks like he's regretting it, though. Oh, my. <sighs> I didn't want this kid to die. He didn't deserve to die. Okay, so he kills the kid. And damn, he's reaching up. Uh, that's, this is sad. And he holds his hand. Guts grabs his hand. And he's crying. Is he going to try to save him? I don't think he can save him, though. Damn. He dies. Ah. He's like, what disturbance is this? So, you got some guys coming up the stairs. He's like, what disturbance is this? Is anything the matter, Highness? Ah. Uh, oh, crap. Master Adonis. Intruder. And now, Guts has to kill them, too. Wow, this is not going well, Guts. Uh Guts has to Uh Guts has to kill them too. <sighs> My god. And now he got a dip. So he got out. Okay, so they're all <laughs> All the guards are going up there now. They everybody's like, "What happened? What's this uproar? A robber, a robber broke into the highness chamber." What what say what? Damn, both of them dead. They're like, in the end, not once did this boy get to make his father smile. Such a young child, how merciless. Monster son. They're like, find him, that robber. You will not let him leave this house alive. Whew. Guts is out here just cutting through dudes, trying to escape. This is not good, bro. This is not good. They got him with the, with an arrow. At least they won't know it's him, though. That's the thing. I, I mean, that might give it away. So he jumps down. He's in the forest. He's dipping. He getting out. It's like a sewer. Sewer. So he... Gets th he gets through. He's like, find him. He fell over there. So he knocks out a bar to go into the, to the sewer. Drops down into the sewer. Why does it look like he hit his head? It looked like he hit his head. And he's like, the sewer, the sound of sewers clashing. That's Gambino. Okay, that's what's his name. Gambino. So it's like, that's Gambino. Right. I was always desperate. Always trying to get you to appreciate me. Well, he's always remembering stuff. So now he's remembering Nosferatu and Gambino. Nosferatu cuts off Gambino's head. <laughs> and he's like, stop it, stop it, stop. You know, Guts and his weird memory stuff and that's for our to pierces him with the sword he's trying to remember stuff and it just goes to show you his memories not memories he's i want to say his hallucinations are so vivid so they're like 
So because it looks like he hit his head and it, he started to hallucinate, maybe just having weird memories and stuff. Um, so we got Nes Nosferatu looking down on him. Why does he look so weird? Okay, so he's, he gets up out of the sewer and he's coughing up blood and he's injured so so they're like oh man I bet right now Griffith's eating good stuff at the princess dinner party it sure has its perks being a knight commander they're like I'm sure it's just stiff up there Casca is there wishing she was with him of course that reminds me, where's Guts? I haven't seen him since this morning. <sighs> He's probably just practicing with his sword alone again, as usual. He's just goofing off his unit in mind. We're supposed to have a joint practice today. Now, now, and without any warning, he just... Hey, give me that. No, I got it for myself. Look like he... <laughs> okay, so Guts arrives in this dining area where they are all eating. And they all must notice that he's injured or the day. So Casca gets up, she's like, Guts, like, oh, cut it out. Uh, they're like, Guts, where have you been all day? It's been a rough day, thanks to you. And why do you look like that? Did you fall in the moat or something? They're like, Gri Griffith, eh? Griffith, eh? Where's Griffith? Like Griffith? He's at a dinner party hosted by Princess Charlotte at Prom Promrose Hall. And he's like, all right, hey. And Casca is like, hey, I wasn't finished. He's like, we out, bruh. <laughs> we ain't got time for you right now, Casca. And he's like, uh. she noticed that he's injured. And he's like, that's an arrow wound. So he's going to Promrose Hall. He ain't playing. He going all the way over there. It's like Griffith. So we got Griffith and the princess, and that's the end of Assassin Part Four. Next chapter, please. It's like precious thing. Okay, so we're at next chapter. I think we're at like, I think we got like four more chapters to go, but these are pretty short. Cause I'm pretty sure, let me see what page we're on right now. I think we're at like, I'm not sure. Damn, we're like halfway through. Like halfway to let's keep it going precious thing This story is amazing and the reason why I think that this story is amazing is because Usually if I'm to say like Usually in manga mangas are usually very extremely fast-paced and the reason why I say that is because a lot of times you will notice in certain mangas that they don't take time to tell the story. And in this, you're you're basically kind of like you feel like you're a part of the story. You feel like a you feel more immersed into the story the way how it is being told. So that's why I dig this so much. That's why I can can lose track of time reading this because it's so immersive when you dive in because it's like you feel like you're a part of this society you feel like you're there witnessing this as a fly on the wall um so it's it's kind of like you you know you feel like a character in the story and the author is doing a very good job of doing that so let's keep it going let's keep it going let's keep it going 
you know what? You know what? Let's take a pause here. We we'll come back for the next chapter, for the next part. Okay. We're back. All right. All right. Let's keep it going. All right. So we got Griffith and the Princess here meeting at the water fountain. Okay. Look like they're about to talk, but she's like, "I feel a bit tired," and Griffith. Looks like he's taking his coat off. So he takes his coat off, puts it um, on the fountain, and tells her, please, have a seat. And she's like, thank you. She sits down and says, thank you. Okay. So Guts is walking up to the hall, it seems. And Casca comes up behind him and like, wait. You mean to go up there like that? It's like, don't embarrass Griffith. If you've got business, wait until you're done talking. I need this. I need this. So she takes his knife and cuts her um, sleeve, I think. I'm saying. Yeah, she cuts her sleeve and ties it around his arrow wound, okay? Okay, the, the thing about Casca that she's, I mean, I don't want to say she's a typical woman. I don't want to say she's a typical woman. I want to say that she is an interesting character. She's an interesting character because sometimes you don't know what direction she's going to, to lean towards, you know. I think she, in some ways she understands the type of person Guts is but at the same time she wants to remain very protective of Griffith so there's that so she wraps the thing her sleeve around his arrow wound and now we're back with the princess and Griffith and so Griffith is talking to her is like is this all right the host stealing away So, um, the princess replies, I don't mind. They will all enjoy themselves regardless. I find a dislike. I dislike these parties. They're just a bother. Besides, in reality, tonight's party is my father's arrangement to divert everyone's attention in the, king in the castle, even but a trifle from the weariness of the war. If we must hold a party like this, it would be so much better just to end the war itself. Why is it that men enjoy little more than shedding blood? She asked this question before. So Griffith responds, is like, Your Highness, ask, ask that at the hunting grounds. Yes, it could certainly be that men possess that savage side. But that is a tool by which they secure and protect a precious thing. I suppose it is a double-edged sword. So she asks, precious thing? Like family or a sweetheart? There are some like th And Griffith responds, there are some like that. But for a man, before he obtain those two, perhaps he must come upon one other precious thing. Um, princess replies, one other precious thing for no other's sake to accomplish it for him for himself a dream dream one who dreams of world domination one who devotes his whole life to to the thorough tempering of one sword. If there is a dream which takes one his whole life to find, there are also dreams which, like storms, devour tens of thousands of other dreams. With no relation to social status, class, background, whether it suits them or not, people yearn for a dream, 
sustained by a dream, hurt by a dream, revived by a dream, killed by a dream. And even after being abandoned by a dream, it continues to smolder from the bottom of one's heart, probably until the verge of death. A man should envision such a lifetime once, and life spent as a martyr to the god named Dream. That's a very profound statement he just made. Um, very, very profound statement he just made. I agree with it 100%. On the positive side, that can also be, it can also be negative, chasing chasing something you'll never accomplish. Um, and I'm not saying go ap- don't go after your dreams. I think everybody should have a dream, you know, and make sure it's something that's attainable. The thing about setting goals and having dreams, you know what I'm saying? It's nothing wrong with it. And what I advise people to do, you know people that I mentor, when I tell them to set goals, I always tell them, make sure you set short-term and long-term goals. Because if you don't do that, if you only have like long-term goals, like, you know, there's, there's a certain level of fallacy to, to certain things. When you do set long-term goals without having short-term goals to get to those long-term goals. So there's an issue that creates, there's this huge gap and then you feel like it's not attainable. So to get to that dream, say for instance, as an example, you want to make a million dollars in one year. If you have that as a long-term goal, make sure you have your short-term goals. Make sure you break it down by the day or by the week, by the month. Make sure you break it down so you have those short-term goals. So when if you're working towards the short-term goal because it puts a clock on it, make sure you have a time stamp on your goals also if you want a little bit of advice from me so i always say you know dreams and stuff like that man it's essential in all of our lives so you know we have to have goals if you don't have goals you're just a leaf blowing in the wind don't know where to go don't know what to do and you know you waste your life and you waste a lot of time so let's keep going very profound statement by Griffith. So I like that. Determination. Okay. So we got Koska and Guts outside. And she's looking at him. And it's like, ultimately to be born. And to then simply live for no better reason. It's like he's talking about Guts. I can't abide such a lifestyle. So she's like, oh, and she's like, looking at it's like, forgive me, I've chattered on. So it must have been a boring topic for a lady. And she's like, no, 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 <clears throat> it's not boring at all, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. Great stuff. Anyways, it was like this. This is the first time I've ever talked with a man this way. It's princess talking. It's like, Lord Griffith, you are a wondrous person. The first time I ever laid eyes on you, I thought you were the son of some aristocrat. You seem so magnificent for someone so young. When I heard that you were common-born, it was very difficult to believe. Somehow, it is as if you are nobler than any of the nobles in this castle. But at the hunt, when you... What? When you taught me how to sound the reed whistle... You seem very simple and careful. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm saying. Like she was, he was teaching her how to, how to, um, how to make sounds with a leaf. Um, so you were just like village child, some village child used to play it in forests and rivers. And right now you say the kinds of things to me, a philosopher would say, yes, you got to be multi-layered, man. That's me in a nutshell multi-layered person you gotta be able in life and i know if you guys don't want to hear this stuff you can fast forward through it i don't care anyways stuff like this is very dear to me because it's how i live my life and how i am i read a lot so in in terms of that i relate to griffith a lot in this because i read a lot of stuff i try to read at least one book 
per month. I know some people is like, oh, I read three books a week. Oh my God, man. <laughs> I'm saying, I don't care. I try to read at least one book a month. Um, you know, sometimes I go for two, but I try to be as knowledgeable as possible, especially on things off the mind and, you know, growth and, you know, just, just self-improvement and stuff like that. Like I read a lot of books on that. Sometimes I do read some books more than once. Um, just in case I missed anything. And sometimes I do go back to books that I've read maybe a year prior and stuff like that just to have a refreshment course and stuff to remind myself and to keep, you know, essential things in my life present. You know what I'm saying? And not just in the past. And that's the kind of person I am. I'm very multi-layered. I'm very um, traveled, very well read. So it's like I can have a conversation with a with a child and help them to understand the same thing and have the the conversation with somebody of stature and they would never believe that I'm the same person that you know may not make the as much money as them but they can feel that way just by how I articulate myself how I speak with them and stuff like that and they'll be wondering you know what I'm saying where is this guy from who is he you know what I'm saying like I've had that question asked about me acts to to my face you know what i'm saying so it's like it's just great stuff it's great to be that way you know what i'm saying where people are surprised at how you carry yourself even though you and, and a lot of times like you guys see me like this most of the time you know with my beard i had to cut my beard the other day um because i had something that required me to to look a little bit better um, so again, of course my girl hated the fact that I had to cut it out, but I was like, you know what? I made the decision not for them, but for me because I wanted to portray a certain image. So, um, that's just how it is. That's just how it goes. You, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying when it comes on to having a multi-layered personality, well, not re necessarily personality, but just the way how you go about things is, I don't want to say it's important, but it's a good trait to have. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody will ever know what to expect. You know what I'm saying? You guys see me when I'm at home chilling, doing videos. I don't want to be uncomfortable. I'm not going to show up here in a suit. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, one of the things that I'm planning to do in the future when it comes on to um, Instagram and stuff like that, you guys, I will start taking pictures and stuff like that, like me outside of this setting you'll get to see pictures and stuff like that me going out and stuff like that um so you get to see a different side of me but let's keep it kosher here so i love this i love this all right so next page okay so we have he's like so she calls him a wondrous person again he's just pretty <laughs> anyway so um guts and Casca is still standing out there she's holding she is she is very jealous and that's what i think that's what's killing her right now because she does she she wants him to accomplish his dreams but at the same time she wants to be with him i think in my belief i think that's the situation so it's like i imagine all of your friends too must have come so far with you attracted by that charm it's like they are excellent troops i do not like the fact that he just said troops i don't like that i don't like the fact that he just called him troops and he didn't say friends or something a little bit more relatable as he just maybe just thinks of them as troops so together we have faced death many times they are valuable com comrades okay comrades is a little better a little better you know valuable comrades devoted themselves to the dream I envisioned but so he's like but to me a friend is something else someone who would never depend upon another's dream someone who wouldn't be compelled by anyone but would determine and pursue in o his own reason to live okay and should anyone trample that dream he would oppose him body and soul even if the threat were me myself what i think is a friend is is one 
who is my equal okay it's a weird way to consider a friend but okay i understand equal and it's in quotes so you know it it makes sense what he's saying it makes sense what he's saying or maybe he just doesn't consider all of them is equal you know what i'm saying maybe he considered guts is equal i don't know yet um but he's kind of depicted as a man by himself now okay so maybe they uh, maybe he considered guts his friend we don't know yet still don't know that yet because that was a bit of a something to understand maybe he is maybe he is not um trying to read between the lines but i don't think how from the way out they're depicting it they're depicting it as you know maybe um the author is depicting it as okay these two are friends but at the same time you know does he consider guts to be an equal because guts is kind of following him right now you know what i'm saying he doesn't really have his own way because he does take orders from griffith so it's, it's like like you know maybe that's the reason why he doesn't really order guts around such so she's like such amazing confidence yes that is how i have achieved i have achieved everything so far there were days when i had not even a slice of bread to eat but now i can even talk like this to you the princess of a whole kingdom She's better. She's like, so he whispers in her ear, like, what is your dream? So somebody rushes in there, like, your highness. And like, what is it? It is a disaster. Julius is dead. <laughs> and Adonis. <laughs> Julius and Adonis is dead. Your uncle, Count Julius, has died. He's like, what did you say? Assassination! Someone snuck into his manor. Even his son, Master Adonis, was. He's like the castle is in an uproar, and Griffith is smiling. He's that evil smile on his face, man. With his makeup <laughs> and lipstick. <laughs> anyway, so they're like, "Uh, hey." It's like precious thing. Guts walks back down. And that's the end of Precious Things, like the Midland Royal Family Crest as Master Bear in a crown seated in the midst of the heavens, the legendary Tower of Triumph. Departure for the front. Okay, that's the name of this one. A little bit art style has changed again. <laughs> so many of them, they say this new campaign could mean an end to the war. Now, if only that comes true, don't worry, Midland has its own guardian angel, you know. It was like, speak of the devil. Here comes Griffith. If it isn't Minister Foss, I have heard. I have heard the Band of the Hawks is the campaign's vanguard. With General Julius dead, Midland has no other guardian deity but you. May fortune smile. It was like, guardian deity? An exaggeration. However, your humble servant will do all within his power. Even so, about this series of assassination skills, it is all but unbearable. It is said that in the troubled times, spirit must lead the human hearts. But a child of only thirteen, like Master Adonis, how very cruel. Surely it is the work of a demon. Like, no, it is no demon. It is the work of man, minister. Incidentally, Sir Griffith, I have caught wind of a strange rumor regarding these assassinations. It's like strange, you, strange rumor? The arrow aimed at Princess Charlotte at the autumn hunt that it was actually not meant for her. But instead, it may have been fired at you, Sir Griffith. Griffith is like, at me? Playing the fool, of course. He's like, impossible. 
A mere knight commander? He's like, you humble yourself, the exploits of the band of the hawk. You lead are widely proclaimed in many lands. Also, according to said rumor, the assassin who attacked you may not have been a chutter smile at all, but a subordinate of someone within this very court. Griffin is like, that is audacious insinuation. I would say so. Under a thin veneer, those of the court can be likened to a den of evil spirit. It is not far-fetched that any number of them would not be above the murder another for the sake of maintaining their influence. Griffith is like, but surely, mm -mm. from their point of view, does one kill outside the castle as you do? Or inside the castle? I suppose that is only that is the only difference. An interesting theory. That being said, I will strive to my utmost outside the castle. Your pardon. And Griffin walks away from Minister Voss. So he's like <laughs> So Voss is like he didn't so much as twitch an eyebrow at the mention of Master Adonis. Hmm. Could this mean that he wasn't, that it wasn't his doing at all? No, that can't be true. It would be too much of a coincidence. There can be no mistake that the assassination of Julius and his son was Griffith's retaliation. Somehow we must have gotten wind that the incident at the Autumn Hunt was at the hands of General Julius. Could he even know of me? <laughs> okay, now you started to worry, huh? Alright, so no, it could never come to that. I didn't intervene directly in the matter anyway. Most importantly, there's no evidence. Even so, he's a crafty one. Ah, well enough. If by this campaign, a long sought after peace visits his kingdom, it will settle his affairs. There will be many others within the castle jealous of his popularity with the people as long as I set him against him as long as I set them against them uh, Varys <laughs> so the only good hero is a dead hero oh did he give him the eye he turned around and gave him the eye oh no Oh no, I, that eye is like looking into his soul, man. That's why I said I think the Behelet is probably telling him some stuff about these people, man. So he's like frightened out of his boots right now. He's like, oh, he knows something. So Casca is here looking, looking like, looking like a snack of the snacker. So they, so he, she calls out to Griffith like, Lord Griffith. Grab it! People love calling his name. So it's like Princess Charlotte. So it was Charlotte calling him? Okay. Thought it was Costco. Okay, so it's like, are you are you departing already? Like, yes I am. On my way. Yes, I am on my way. It's like, um what is that, Mecca? It's like so she gave him something. He's like, take this. And she Griffin is like, what is it? It is a necklace made from lodestone. It is not very valuable, but it's a memento of the former queens of my mother's. But an item of such importance. No, please have it. With the lodestone, the man half and woman half are extracted or attract woman half are attracted to one another it is said that the two who possess each half are destined to meet again a naturally occurring magnet okay so that's what lodestone means okay i dig it so it's like if you were to carry that necklace made from the man stone Surely this necklace of the woman's stole should draw it back and see you safely home from the battlefield. So please, 
accept it. Mm, no. <laughs> Yo, my dude Griffin is a savage. He's like, no. <laughs> there is no way I can keep such an important keepsake of your highness. But... Therefore, once I return from this campaign, I swear, I will give this back to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Trying to be romantic. All right. Like, I, I have never dreaded battle as much I do this time. It's like, Lord, Lord Griffith, please. Please be safe. Damn, he got... Um, Casca not me and out here. It was like you there. Knight. It's like, yes. Highness. Casca's just responded. It's like, please protect Lord Griffith. It's like, yes, Highness. Even with my own life. <laughs> you know, Casca got to respond. Okay, so. Griffith touches him. Like, let's go. Okay, yep. Yeah. So Griffith and Costco leaves the castle. Oh yeah. It's like Charlotte Is this the Queen? I'm guessing this is the Queen. We finally meet the Queen. Okay, so Princess replies, Mother So it's like, What do you think you're doing, Charlotte? So she's like, What do you mean? Do not Feign ignorance, giving gifts to one such as him. She is like, it's my business to whom I give my things. Unacceptable. She's like, <laughs> unacceptable. You are a member of the royal family, yet you give gifts to a man of humble birth. Properly speaking, one of your rank should even hesitate to so lightly converse with him. But mother! So she's like, you are 16 now. No longer a child. Try remembering that. You are the princess of Midland. She's like, but... Uh. I was like, Charlotte! Calls out to her again. I look like Griffith is here now. On his horse, he's like, move out! So they're leaving on their campaign. Beautiful drawing as ever. What I think a friend is, is one who is my equal. Did he hear Griffin say, Griffith say that? I don't think so. Did he? Departure from the front end. It's the end of that chapter. We got about 50 more pages to go or so. Oh, my God. We're getting We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. Let's cool our chops. Take a break. All right. New. All right. New chapter. Let's go. So it looks like who are they going to fight? Engagement. So, Casca says, seems like, or she's thinking at a time like this. So they're like, what's wrong? You look pale. So she's like, nothing. Come on, let's do this. So they're heading into battle. Okay, so they're all like, ah, cling, cling, swords everywhere. <laughs> The battle. Who are they going up against? So they're like, ooh. Damn, man. This this dude here, man. <laughs> this just use brute force for everything. He's huge, though. So, and man. But when he uses that club, bruh. He's taking eyeballs, popping everything. So he's like taking him out. Boom, boom, bash. <laughs> you know. Who is this, Casca? Like, shoot somebody in the eye or something. Okay, so we got Casca fighting over here. Uh, she's a beast on the battlefield, too, man. 
killed kills this guy. She's like, Whew, this is a melee. Okay, somebody tried to hit her. She blocks the attack with her sword. Boom, boom. Bada doosh dash. Still on a horse. She knocks that guy off her horse. Off his horse. Okay, we got this. Who the hell is this guy? Got some dude towering. Look like his horse is just way bigger. What what's happening here? Why is his horse so big? It's like so he so he's like so you're her, the only woman who commands a thousand of the band of the hawk. I can't stomach it. A woman playing at being a knight, man, please. Women are inferior to men in strength. What use could they be in a battle? Like that, you don't. You can use skill and and kill people, man. It, it ain't all about brute strength. <laughs> you know, like no, you might have a use as a nighttime plaything for your fellow soldiers. Casca's like, what was that? He's like, perhaps you even achieved your rank of commander by sneaking into that man's Griffith's bedroom. Ooh, this man is firing shots, man. He firing shots. She ran in. She's like, you bastard. You better be careful. Why you get hurt? Don't get angry. Just be you. Damn, she got knocked off her. She, damn, he knocks her off her horse. Ah oh, man, and she's off her horse. She gets back up. She was bouncing. Damn, he goes in for the kill. He goes in for the kill. Miss. Damn, right between her legs. It's like, so she's like, this guy is strong. It's like the battlefield is the sacred ground of men. I, Adon, head of the blue whale, ultra heavy, armored, fierce, assault, annihilation. <sighs> you know what, man? <laughs> At this point, I think this guy is trolling us. He must be trolling us with these names. This, 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 he trolling us, man. Blue Whale Ultra Heavy Armored Fierce Assault Annihilation Night Corp? Shall teach you the folly of your frivolity in setting foot upon it. So he tries to hit um, Casca again. He's like, I can't. I can't. I've got, I've got no strength. So there's like, big sis, Commander Casca. And like, damn you. So she's like, fools, get back. Oh, well, she she wants a one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. What's going on over here? I see people losing their heads. Damn, people losing their heads. What's going on? If you let yourself be led by a woman you are weaklings did somebody come and cut off all those dudes heads that was just coming to to Casca's aid just now is that what just happened so she's like damn you what's wrong nowhere left to run it's like go on go on uh oh you Adorn yourself like a man, but you're quite the gem, aren't you? I'll offer you a chance. If you come quietly as my prisoner, you can leave this place alive. But what I mean by prisoner is you'd be my arm is, my arm is, harlot. Damn, bro. He's like, go to hell, dog. Then you can die. And they're like, big, big sis. And she's just standing there. Did she want to die? Ooh. Guts comes and saves her. Nice. 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 I love it. I love it. This ain't 
so she's <laughs> so guts is like this ain't like you so she's like guts she's like raiders captain guts you did he kill that dude with one swing is that what he just did uh, you loud or did he knock him off his horse i don't know what he did he did something. He's like, come on. That's Guts saying, come on. He's like, anyone will do. I just feel like swinging this with all my might until I can't think about anything else. Okay, so we're at the two final chapters of the arc. Finally, we're already showing Casca's nipples. You know, I don't, I, I don't understand. <laughs> Sex with nails, standard nails. Oh, yeah. Casca, man. She, she is, she, she's beautiful. Her drawing is beautiful. I like how um, he draws her. Okay, so we got Casca here. Um, so Gus comes to her aid. Guts comes to her aid, and what's he doing here? Did he go in for, oh, he starts to spin. He starts to spin his fork, <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> that weird looking tree pronged spear that he has. How now, boy? You stop my attack well, but lightning doesn't strike twice. Can you stop this? He's spinning the thing above his head. The ultimate spear technique, which can crush even marble, pass secretly down through my Kaboralwitz family for 140 years. Take this! Kanan Zenbo. <laughs> okay. First time in the history of Berserk that somebody has named a move. Okay. First time I noticed that. Maybe it happened before. I don't think it has happened before. But this is the first time somebody has actually named a move that they have. What is Ganzan Zenpo? <laughs> okay. So this translates as rock cutting whirlwind. So he's like, take this. Why they always gear us up for you know? They always gear us up and make it make us feel like this is going to be a hype fight, and then it does hens in one swing. You know what I'm saying? Like, l l look at this. I mean, <sighs> this is crazy, man. One swing, he cuts through the spear and everything right down the middle, split his head in two. Come on, man. It's unfair. Gut strength is is unfair, bro. He only struggles against demons. It's ridiculous. Okay, so we got taking out that guy, splitting his head in two. You ain't ready for prime time. He's like, poor ho. Gunjan. And Guts cuts him across the face to finish him off. My God, man. And it's so detailed. <laughs> Look at this, man. Oh, my God. Teeth and everything goes flying. Damn, bro. Knocked him off his horse clean. Oh, he's like. Uh, he's like. Ganzan Zembu. <laughs> so what? <laughs> Awesome, he took that monster down with just two swings. That's our captain. Watch him go. What's wrong? This isn't how you usually are. You're talking to Casca. Your fighting's horrible. You'll wind up dead if you're out of it. And then she faints. It's like, hey. What? 
Wait, this dude is still alive? He's still alive. He pulls out a um he pulls out a crossbow. She's about to fall over a cliff. I didn't even realize that. Dude pulls out his crossbow and shoots at Guts and Costco over there. Guts is trying to catch Costco. He does catch her arm. She looked like she fainted. And Guts takes an arrow, so it knocks him off his his horse. It knocks him off his horse, and he still got Casca, but they're falling off a cliff. And he's like, he's like, ah. <laughs> damn, how is he still alive? So he's like, so they're up there like, Captain, Guts, Casca. Okay, there's, there's water down below. So they fall into the water. Okay, they fall into the water. And okay, so he's okay. And he pull, pulls her out of the water with him. <laughs> he's like, I'm never doing that again. Swimming with my armor on. <laughs> yeah, that must be an experience. I was like, oh, oh. Ah, uh, damn, she's, oh no, lips on lips, okay, so he takes off her armor, and trying to revive her mouth to mouth, so she finally comes back to, starts breathing again, and he pulls the arrow out of his side, oof, he's like, damn it, that whale bastard. He's fish bait next time I see him. Still, we're lucky to be alive falling from up there. Hard to believe. He's like, what now? Ain't no way we can scale that cliff. How can we get back? Okay, he's like, high fever. She has a high fever. Must be why she fainted. This is bad. If she stays in the rain like this. Okay, so he spots a cave. Okay, so they're telling Griffith what happens. He's like Guts and Casca. And they were like, it, it was a quite a high cliff. But there was a river beneath, so surely they m must have survived. That's what he's saying. This is him we're talking about. I don't think it's anything life-threatening at least. But whether he'd land safely or not from that height, he'd been wounded and something was wrong with Casca. If we send out a search party, we should hurry. We should hurry. Sir Griffith, you do understand. In war, conquering the enemy is most important. To spare valuable troops from those granted by the king, to confirm the life or death of, at best, a mere unit commander, now would be outrageous. Furthermore, he brought this upon himself by engaging in personal combat. And they're like, no, no, that wasn't. Besides, the Band of the Hawks, highly touted raiders, captain, and female commander are together. Are they not? They ought to be able to surmount such a dilemma with ease. Certainly. They're like, if they're alive. So you can send some people to go confirm. You don't have to send a whole damn army. But you could send some men to go make sure they, they're okay. So Guts and Casca is down here. He's trying. They're in the cave. He's trying to tend to her. And he's like, now what to do? It looked like he took off his clothes and put it on her. It seems it looked like he took off his shirt and gave it to her or something. Now what to do? He's like, some of the enemy saw us fall. If I kindle a fire, it'd be like telling them where we are. And Casca can't leave here for a while yet. Duh. Can't help it. There's just no other way. Oh, damn. He was considering um, not, like, taking off her clothes. But he needs to take off the wet clothes off of her, I'm guessing. So, he didn't want to do it, but he had to do it. So, ho he said, oh, well, that's the way it is. Besides, it's not exactly the first time with her. What a pain. 
What the hell is she thinking anyway? Just don't wake up. Going into battle with a fever. This is why women don't have any sense. <laughs> That's a bit harsh. She's bleeding? Where? Where is she bleeding from? Looks like she's bleeding. Blood? Did the idiot get wounded? Is she on her period? Probably. So, so that's it. Must be rough being a woman. She must... Damn. That's so cool of him. That's a beautiful image, by the way. That is a beautiful image, well drawn, everything. Pretty cool stuff. Casca and okay, final chapter. Final chapter of this. Hopefully I can finish this. Okay, so it's like whether you come on um Griffith is whether you come along or not is your decision. You know how to fight already, don't you? Oh, so they're showing Casca's backstory, how she joined. Okay, so but but Okay, so this is how she joined up. Okay, so it's but So he's like, yo <laughs> covered her with leaves. She finally woke up. Okay, so they're like Where? A cave by the river. Luckily, falling into the river saved us. River? I was like, what the heck? You don't remember a thing. After I had it out with that whale jerk, you lost your footing and fell off the cliff. You're pretty easy going considering we almost drowned. So she's like, stupid. So she's trying to get up. She's like, lie down for now. The fever ain't done dropping yet. Okay, a lot of titties showing. Um, so she's like, what could I do? You were soaking wet and freezing to death to booth. I think she's on a period. Damn, she's like, what? What's that look for? And she punches him in the face. <laughs> she's like, ow. <laughs> she's throwing everything at him. <laughs> like, what are you doing? He's like, what are you doing? That hurt a ton. Here, I saved you. Here, I saved you. And now you punch me in the face. So she's like, <laughs> he's like, hey, cut that out. Uh, uh. <laughs> he's like, outside. Hello, you finished now? You hysteric bitch. <laughs> I ain't trying to lord this over you, but I'm the one who almost died dragging you out of the river with with armor on. Instead of one word of thanks, you hurl a knife at me? If you weren't a woman, I'd knock your jaw right out of joint right for that. I can't stomach it. A woman playing at being a knight. Women are inferior to men in strength. What use could they be in a battle? She's remembering what that douchebag said to to him, the whale, to her, the whale. Perhaps you even achieved your rank of commander by sneaking into that man's Griffith's bedroom. Um, you're always so damn ready to be pissed about something. This is why women ain't cut out to be warriors. And he's saying the same thing that she was. That that he was saying to her. He's like, what? He's like, I wasn't, I wasn't born a woman because I wanted to be born a woman because I wanted to be I wasn't born a woman because I wanted to be it's like tried to, so is that now she's crying it's like hey sorry not that I really get it she tries to punch him again and he catches the punch and he's like Sanuva you really are some kind of bitch is that like, calm your ass down don't make me force you let <laughs> she's like <laughs> she's like let go she's like let she fell out again it's like hey I told you it's like here put this on I was wearing it so it's dry already 
Uh, so he gave um, gave her his, sh his shirt. So I was like, what? You still crying? Oh, shut up. Look away. <laughs> He's like, it's pathetic. You're the only one I didn't want to be saved by. She really hates me. <laughs> I shouldn't have saved her. He's like, so speaking of which, why'd you join the band of the Hawk? Like I said before, ain't it rough for a woman fighting for a living? He's like, if you don't want to say it, then whatever. Griffith. It's Griffith. It's like, my home village was poor and, and nestled in a mountain ravine. The land was barren and we couldn't really grow much besides oats. I got to make sure that I'm not getting feedback, guys. Just don't worry about the awkward pause. I'm making sure I don't have feedback right now. So let me check real quick. Because I got the fan on and sometimes the fan is picking up. Okay. So it was the fan. Sorry for that. It was the fan. It was picking up the fan. I thought it was something else. Okay, so my own my own village was poor and nestled in a mountain ravine. The land was barren and we couldn't really grow much besides oats. Even so, we were bled dry by taxes for the war effort. Having to go three days without any food was a common thing. People even starved to death in winter. Because the village was near the border, it was often involved in skirmishes. When that happened, all we could do was hide in the mountains and watch silently as our houses and fields were ravaged. It was just like with any other village. We were all used to being robbed and walked over. I too thought that such a way of life was just natural. One day, a nobleman who happened to pass through the village on a long ride caught sight of me. The nobleman approached my parents saying he wanted me for a castle maid. While my father was reluctant, he accepted the offer. There was no other practical answer. My family had six children and strangely none of us had starved to death by then. I think it was a natural choice for my father to lose his youngest daughter who wasn't much use as a worker and yet another mouth to feed. For real? But en route to the castle, she got raped. At least the guy was trying to rape her. She ran. She dipped out. He's like, it was obvious when you think about it. This was his aim from the beginning. There is no nobleman whimsical enough to go out of his way to save a destitute girl he's never even seen before. So, man. It's like, I can't help it. It's natural. Those two ideas were always in my heart to help me stay connected to reality. But just then, damn, somebody cut his ear off. <laughs> well, I'm guessing this is Griffith that saved her. Yep. Griffith on the move. Does being born of the nobility mean that you are chosen by God? It's like so strange. It was as if the image of some saint adorned the wall of my village church had just come to life. He was awe-inspiring, an otherworldly spectacle. I thought God had taken pity on this miserable, powerless girl and sent an angel. That's how it seemed for an instant to me at 12 years old. But what that angel extended to me wasn't a fairy tale like help in hand in my time of need. 
Damn, he stabbed his sword in front of her. If you have something to protect, take up that sword. That's what Griffith said to her. And she didn't take up the sword. I mean, the guy, the guy, the no, the nobleman or whatever, dived to go get the sword. And Casca, she grabs it first. And I'm guessing she stabbed him as he lunged at her. And that's her first kill. Okay. Well, at least she was saved from being raped. She was like, I was afraid. I don't know whether I stabbed him, I stabbed him or if he fell on the blade by himself. In any case, I killed someone for the first time. I was so afraid I couldn't speak or move from that spot. I was never going to let go of the sword with blood dripping from it. Griffith. Yeah, he just nodded deeply and slowly. But that was the real helping hand he extended to me. The fear didn't vanish completely, but the feelings of guilt and regret faded. His, magnificent, his magnificence and the warmth of the blanket he gave me filled my heart. It's like, Griffith, we're finished over here. It's like, are these people robbers? Uh, wait. It's like, what, what should I do? I do as you wish and she replies let me let me come with you on impulse those words sprang from my mouth hey hey don't joke around girly <laughs> we ain't just some thieves we're collecting war funds so we can eventually set up an army how can we fight with women and kids along She's like, I can't go back to my village if I go back alone and on earth and on hurt the official will never the official will never believe that you aided me. He's the same as the nobles. I don't know what I'd use as an excuse when they question me. Besides, it would be a burden on my family. It's like, please, if you tell me to learn the sword, I will. So he's like, Whoa, whoa, she's serious. And Griffith replies, you might die, you know. She's like, she nods like, didn't I tell you do as you wish? Whether you come along or not is your decision. You know how to fight already, don't you? He's like, but, but you were the one who gave me the sword and the blanket. And that is the end of the volume. Okay, guys. Thanks for, for tuning in as always. Um, hopefully you guys stick around and check out the review. Of course, going to go in a little bit on these chapters. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you're watching this on the Google Drive, please go back to YouTube and check out the review at least. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm guessing uh, thank you in advance to Layden because I'm probably going to forget to timestamp the review. He always does so for me. So thanks in advance to um, to Layden Man for, for always doing that for my Berserk read-throughs. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I will see you guys for the review. All right. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the review of Berserk Volume 6. It was awesome, man. It was awesome. A lot of story to tell. The thing that I that I like the most about this manga, as I said before during the episode, during the read through, I did touch a bit on this, and what I like the most about this read through is mainly the 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 storytelling, the way how the author takes time to 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 master the pacing of each chapter of each volume. That you, as I said, you feel so immersed into the world, and that's why it's so easy for me to get through the chapters, even though they're so long. It's easy for me to get through because 
you feel so immersive immersed into the world that you feel like you're a part of the world so you feel like you're there as a fly on the wall during all these awesome con conversations um griffith getting even more status now you know because of the um the miss assassination attempt by count julius okay so count julius had a son of course griffith retaliated after doing some investigation and stuff like that i'm wondering if he if he does suspect minister foss um minister foss reminds me of of varus from game of thrones he's that guy you know he reminds me of varus and and not to the length of little finger but definitely varus the one that's always kind of in some ways looking out for the crown backhand and everything um not that he wanted the crown he never wanted the crown so he kind of gives me that vibe you know minister foss so the situation it's just hatred man and you're always gonna you're always gonna have that you're always gonna have haters that don't want to see you get anywhere you know what i'm saying and this thing between nobles and commoners you know what i'm saying like that thing is a that's why i was saying earlier that the mon monarchy stuff like i can't stand it and it's still even today you still have countries in the world still practicing monarchy and, uh, and i'm like why you know what i'm saying like you know i love a democratic society um the the the, the reason why i love a democratic society uh, um democracy of the, as they like to call it right is because the people get a right to choose like you know what i'm saying you have a vote and you vote in a president no matter how stupid they are you know the people have a say you know what I'm saying? People don't have a say in dictatorships and monarchies. It's just monarchies is just like, okay, you're the oldest son, you get to take over. Um, you know, if 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 uh, it's just weird. It's just it's just weird to me that you still have countries in the world. Like to me, I think they should do away with 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 monarchy stuff. Is you know, especially England is the most prominent one that's out right now you know what it's like when anything royal is going on they act as if you know what i'm saying what is it what's the fascination with them i, I don't understand what Th their their riches don't come from you know it's the people that keep them rich you know what i'm saying it's the people that keep them rich over there so that's even another thing where i'm like why you, you know what i'm saying it's just it's just kind of weird to me because it's not like they're they're rich from you know olden days or whatever and they got old money or whatever the situation is it ain't even about that it's the people and stuff they get a kickback from taxes and all of this other stuff and they're like these i idle people that they look they have a certain amount of influence over the people too you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like they're not a part of the government because they are a part of the government. But still, you know, the prime minister kind of answers to the queen over there, which is kind of weird to me because the people vote in the prime minister. So it's like, it's weird. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So cool stuff, man. Cool beans. But I do think I, I'm not a monarchy. Like, I'm not pro monarchy. Let's put it like that you know what i'm saying um so um so so when it comes on to the stuff that is happening with between griffith and and you know everybody is hating him and his rise and the king kind of likes it because the king want to be protected and who's the best person to do that griffith and 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 the band of the hawk you can't deny that you can't you can't um debate that they are the best. They've been winning constantly. They don't lose battles, and they sh they you know they showed up, and they really um, you know showed that them other dudes or, or, or you know that Julius was leading. They're bums. You know what I'm saying? Well, they probably had some glory back in the day, but as uh, Minister Foss was telling him, dude, your famous is fading. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's fading, fading in the background. You know what I'm saying? Um. 
So Griffin found out that it was him with the assassination attempt. I I kind of like the chemistry between Griffith and Charlotte. Like I like that chemistry, the way how the author is portraying it. I don't think, as I said, that scene where he was talking about a friend. I don't know if Guts heard him because he was all the way down there. So how did he? Would he have heard that conversation? You know. But at the same time, I'm saying like, does he consider Guts? A friend friend you know what I'm saying like a real friend is that what the author was trying to depict I think I think they are friends but at the same time it's kind of a uh, of a double meaning because he kind of res- he, he kind of doesn't consider everybody in the group his friends he does consider them comrades which is not the same thing okay guys I hope you guys know that comrades and friends not the same thing very similar meaning but they're not the same thing comrades can be you know comrade friends in my book and me personally i wouldn't say some some if you fight with me we're probably comrades you know what i'm saying if you fight with me but you're probably not my friend you get what i'm saying you're probably just doing it you're probably just fighting with me just because you know we might be in the same unit fighting against a common enemy you know what i'm saying but you probably we're probably not friends but we're comrades you know what i'm saying um so comrades is more people that come together for a common goal um you know what i'm saying like a team of people going out there to complete a mission so a comrade mean if you want it in simple terms but friend is a little bit more it's a closer relationship it's a more deeper meaning to being somebody's friend you get what i'm saying like I don't have to say thanks, you know, speaking of Hunter Hunter, you know, what Killua keeps saying in Hunter Hunter is like, I'm not going to keep thanking you. Just remember that this is the last time I'm thanking you because I consider us to be friends. So if you do something for me, it's because we're friends. You're supposed to do that. You get what I'm saying? So um, so in my book, that's how I consider the difference between a comrade and a friend. So great things are coming. Great things are coming. I can see. I would like to learn more about Casca's journey into becoming, you know, a commander in the band of the Hawk. Of course, definitely want to see that. So I'm glad, man. Um, the scene there with her, with grip, with guts taking care of her was pretty cool too. Um, it's good to see a soft side of guts because I would have never imagined seeing him in a role like that. And, you know, that's what I'm saying, man. They're, all these characters, like you want to call them um, MCs, main characters. If you want to call them that, that's fine. But they're all so multi-layered. And, you know, we're getting into Casca's backstory now. We know so much about Guts already. Know a little bit about um, Griffith. And they're so multi-layered to the point where you just have to give them respect as characters. Corcus can go suck a dick. I don't give a damn about it. <laughs> he's a hater point blank period he's a hater he's never gonna stop being a hater i don't know maybe in the future you know what i'm saying he might stop being a hater you know but straight up man um gotta talk about the art the art was incredible again as always never miss misses a beat everything is portrayed quite well looks like this arthur really takes his time with his craft and he loves doing it and it's so obvious in his in his work so definitely man the story is ramping up um story is ramping up to be great man one of the best that i've ever read manga or any book for that matter whether it be fiction or or non-fiction so it's one of those great stories that you really have to take time with you know what i'm saying and to remember stuff you know, and I'm glad that he's going back in time to help us to understand who Guts is. How did we come around to him fighting demons? Where did he get this power? You know what I'm saying? This determination to take out demons. Why is it that he's not friends with Griffith anymore? Why is it that Griffith is a part of the God Hand? What is happening? What is happening you know, so some great things happen in, in these chapters, man. That is awesome. It was more story than anything else. Just setting up. As I said before, doesn't look like the queen 
likes Griffith, but I know the king does. The doesn't look like the queen likes him, and she's spewing the same foolishness, talking about commoners and no nobility and royalty and rank and all this other stuff, which means diddly squat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In their world, yes, it might mean a lot, but I believe um, social status is a figment of our imagination. And a lot of times people might treat you like you're lower than them, but do you have to act like you are lower than them? And that is the difference. That is the difference. Yes, people might treat you like you're lower than them. And that's why, you know, I pause to talk about having a multi layer to you where people can't tell, you know what I'm saying? Like you look at me, like a lot of people as look at me and they're like, really? You're, you're from Jamaica and some, some, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm a country bumpkin. I'm from the country. I lived among bunch of trees and on a hill and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the kind of environment I'm coming from, you know? So people don't know that unless you talk to me, unless you know that, that is not something you're going to just hear me just say out loud. It's not information that you're going to find about the internet about me. You know what I'm saying? But now that I've said it, you know. But those, you know, people that I interact with on a daily basis, like they, a lot of times when I talk about my background, they're like, Man, wow, you know about that stuff? You know that? You know this? You know, that's because I educate myself. I try to be as multi layered as possible so that, you know, keep myself up to date with most things and you guys have helped me on this channel also to learn about even more things so it's awesome man it's awesome to be exposed to great stories like this and to kind of relate and draw parallels and stuff like that for real life and i dig it i love it i love you guys for continuing to support these videos man thank you guys so much for tuning in for another read through one of the greatest of all times of course, you already know who it is. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You are Terror Squad. I am Mr. Terabyte Reacts, and I will see you guys for the next Berserk read through. Peace.